The New York Islanders' season ended this year after they were eliminated by the Carolina Hurricanes in a six-game series. Despite the length of the series, it was largely controlled by the Hurricanes. This is despite the Hurricanes missing star forward Andrei Svechnikov and not getting anything particularly special from their goaltending. The New York Islanders are not far removed from the team that made back-to-back -back conference finals in 2020 and 2021. However, there have been plenty of changes since then that have changed the capabilities of the franchise. With two disappointing seasons after two excellent ones, it seems fair to ask. With the way the Islanders are currently built, can they get back into range of a Stanley Cup? There's no question that Barry Trotz, when he took the Islanders job, was viewed as one of the best coaches in the NHL, having just come off of a Stanley Cup victory with Washington. In his first year, Trotz took a team that wasn't even expected to make the playoffs to 103 regular season points. The two years after were of course both excellent also, with their two conference final appearances, before 2021-22, marked the first and only year with Trotz, the Islanders failed to make the playoffs. Leading into 2022-23, Barry Trotz was relieved of his duties, leaving his longtime assistant, Lane Lambert, to step into the role of head coach. Lambert, being Trotz's longtime assistant, obviously understands his philosophies as a head coach. It's still difficult to move on from a two-time Jack Adams winner and recent Stanley Cup champion and expect improvement. The Islanders, of course, did make the playoffs this year, though, and with their squad not expected to be great going into the year, it's fair to say that Lambert did a good job in his first year. Another big change occurred midway through the season. The biggest issue that the Islanders have dealt with has been a lack of scoring and general high-end offensive talent. To help fix this, the Islanders traded Anthony Bovillier and Futures in exchange for Bo Horvat. Horvat, in the midst of a career year, was 8th in the NHL in goals scored at the time of the trade. He immediately took over as the Islanders' top goal scorer by a wide margin, and top point scorer too. A week after the deal was made, Horvat signed an 8-year, $68 million extension, making him the second highest paid player on the team next season after Barzal. But after the trade, Horvat regressed back closer towards his regular scoring clip, only scoring 7 goals and 16 points over his 30 regular season games, and only 2 points in 6 playoff games. Bo Horvat is a great piece to add to any team. He's good at both ends of the ice, and a reliable 25-35 goal scorer. Acquiring Horvat when they did, though, caused the Islanders to pay a big price for his extension, now locked into an 8.5 per year deal for a player that's most likely a second-line center, or 1B on a true contender. Maybe Horvat bounces back in year 2, and ends up scoring like he did for Vancouver at the beginning of 2022-23. Until he proves himself to be that player again, it looks like the Islanders overpaid to bring in a solid top six center. These are the major additions to the team since 2020 and 2021. Most of the top line talent is the same, with the biggest losses since those conference finals teams being Devon Taves in a trade and Jordan Eberle in the Seattle expansion draft. Some players have improved, some have declined, and plenty of depth pieces have come and gone. The biggest improvement since then comes in the form of team MVP Ilya Sorokin. Since establishing himself as the clear starter in 2021-22, Sorokin has been in the top tier of goalies in the league. Over the two-year span of 2021-22 and 2022-23, Sorokin has had the joint second-best save percentage behind Linus Olmark and equal to Igor Shesterkin, both of whom will be Vesna winners once Olmark wins it officially this year. He is the 6th best goals against average behind only Boston's goalies, Carolina's goalies, and Igor. And, by Money Puck's model, he is 51.5 goals saved above expected over the two years, with the third most in 2022-23 at 38.7. Whether it's through the eye test or practically any available goalie stat, it's clear to see that Ilya Sorokin is an elite NHL goalie. With an elite goalie, anything is possible and it doesn't hurt that the Islanders run a defensive system backed up by high-quality blue liners. Adam Pellick, Ryan Pulak, and Scott Mayfield still eat up huge chunks of ice time for the Islanders, all three having good to great defensive metrics while chipping in somewhere in the range of 20 to 30 points per season. 
The three are all crucial to the defense of the team, and a big reason why the Islanders have a reputation for being tough to score against. The big offensive driver from the back end has become Noah Dobson. Dobson, still only 23 years old, has had plenty of ups and downs this past season. Dobson has a very powerful shot, which allowed him to score 13 goals for his second season in a row. However, many might argue that Dobson has actually taken a step back this season as a result of his defensive liabilities. At only 23, under a very team-friendly contract, the Islanders will most certainly be wanting to hold on to Dobson. Under their defensive system, Dobson's mistake should be something that is improved by their coaching staff over the coming years as they hope to develop him into a true top-pairing defender. The top scorer on the team this season was Brock Nelson, an incredibly underrated and versatile top six forward. Nelson scored 75 points on the season, a total that put him 24 points above next closest Islanders team scorer, Matthew Barzal. Barzal is far and away the most purely skilled forward on the Islanders, capable of doing things on the ice that no other Islanders player can do. Despite playing five seasons since, Barzal's career high in scoring is still his rookie season. It's clear that Barzal has the capability to be a consistent point-per-game player, but he's been unable to do so since his Calder winning year. Hopefully, he'll be able to avoid injury and reach that mark soon enough. Backing Barzal, Nelson, and Horvat are a host of 30-plus-year-old two-way forwards, including Anders Lee, Kyle Palmieri, and Jean-Gabriel Pajot, among others. Another major concern for the Islanders as an organization is the lack of young talent, something that most teams in the league usually have available to draw on, even top contenders. The Islanders have one of the weakest prospect pools across the league, and trading away Atu Ratu and their 2023 first for Horvat didn't do them any favors in fixing that. Their best chance at a star prospect comes in the form of William Dufour, a 2020 fifth round pick who has exceeded all expectations and looked excellent at both the QMJHL and AHL level. Aside from him, it's tough to envision any of the Islanders prospects making an impact on the team anytime soon. So, what the Islanders have is an elite goalie, good to great defensive group, an average to below average forward group. It's not far off the level of quality the 2020 and 2021 teams had, at least on paper. But those teams also had Barry Trotz. The Islanders are a weaker team now than they were in past years, but that doesn't mean they don't still have a decent chance at fighting for a championship. On paper, the Islanders don't come close to matching the high-end talent of teams like Toronto, Vegas, or Edmonton. But again, what they have in Sorokin is something none of those teams can come close to either. As long as Sorokin is playing at an elite top 5 or top 3 goalie in the NHL level, it would be a waste to not try and build a contending team in front of him. Sorokin is still only 27 years old, which is pretty young for a goalie. The Islanders have plenty of time to retool the team around him, if they deem it necessary. With the Horvat trade and extension, Isles management signified that they fully intend to continue trying to compete. Maybe they don't have the amount of talent of some of the other top teams, but a lot could change to close that gap before the next season. At the end of the day, all the Islanders need to do is reach the playoffs, because once a goalie as good as Sorokin is locked in, anything is possible.